Hallelujah. We want to welcome you to our Wednesday service. God bless you mightily. You know, I am just so grateful for what God it is, what it is that God is going to do today. All right. And you know how we do it at SRM. Okay. We just don't watch, you know, a, a program. We're just not watching a session. I believe that this is a time that is destined of God for you to be blessed so that you can learn something that will make a difference in your life. And I'm so honored for what God is going to do today. So before we get to prayer, I just want to make sure that you are ready to learn something new, something fresh from the kingdom of God himself. All right. So please get your paper, get your pencil, and we are ready to learn from God. God bless you. And before I do anything, I'm going to introduce my guest today. I have an amazing couple who I've known for years now. I feel like I grew up under them, actually, because of how long we've known each other. But they're such a blessing to our ministry. I'm going to let them say hello, introduce themselves, and we will get started on a journey and an amazing knowledge that we're going to be a part of today. So with that said, please say hi to the people. Hello, I'm Phil. And I'm Pam. And they we've known each other for how long? 25 years or so. Something, something. I, I, it's been about 20 years for sure, right? And uh, I remember when I first met them, their daughter, Annie, was like crayon. I mean, she was so young and she would draw me all these really cute pictures and all that stuff. And years later, here we are. And look at what God is doing, right? We're yeah. all serving the Lord and doing some amazing things and trusting God for the kingdom. Now, listen, if, you, uh, if you've been paying attention, which I'm sure you have and you've been watching our services, you would know that Phil is the one who plays the guitar. What a blessing that is. And Pam has also exhorted and said some amazing things in this ministry. And in the past, I've also done a Wednesday session with her. Mm -hmm. And it was so incredible that people are like, you know what? Pam has to be back and here she is. Okay. So with that said, we're going to get into the word. But Phil, why don't you pray and then we'll, we'll get ready. Oh, Lord, thank you for this opportunity, and um, we trust your Holy Spirit's presence and that you'll speak mm. through us and allow us to share something that could be a blessing to someone else and a blessing to ourselves, and um, I pray that we get out of the way and let you do your thing here. Mm. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, 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 amen. So this is another dimension of what we've been talking about for the past, let's just say, four weeks to five weeks, which is sin iniquity and transgressions and these two are bringing a new perspective of it which we need to pay attention to because it applies to all of us all right so let me just start off by asking you this question all right we've talked about sin iniquity and transgressions so how is that giving you new light or understanding of what is happening with regards to those three um in part being in the middle of a SIT fast has uh -huh. put us in the space here where we're at right now. Mm, mm, it's mm. got us looking much closer, and it actually has us, um, besides praying together, are actually, you know, usually we do our studies individually, but this week we've been kind of doing our studies together. Amen. And spending time talking and sharing what both of us are finding. Amen. 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 And how about you, Pam? What do you think? Well, the, the takeaway I have is, um, you know, sin is missing the mark. Yes. Of course. Yes. And then... Um, <laughs> It, the, it was insightful that the iniquity is kind of an attitude that we have yes. about the sin and then tra transgression being the action. Yes. So with the particular, you know, um, malady sin that God's brought to my attention that, that needs focused on for me, you know, um, which is got me. Mm. me and sloth for me because it's mm. real easy to not only am I eating but I'm often I'm um, binge watching <laughs> no, no, Netflix no, no, while I'm eating and, and so and, then and, I'm not I'm being slothful and I think, as well. And I think and I think in the U.S. it's a big problem. What did you guys say? Oh, I mean, heck, I need to lose weight. Mm -hmm. I need to do stuff, and then slothfulness, and you're sitting on the couch forever, and you know from the inclines of the Holy Spirit that you should be doing something. Right? Yes, yep. yes. Mm -hmm. and so it's not just about food, it's about the attitude I have towards food mm -hmm. and what I use it for and do with it mm. than the actual, you know, picking out and, and, and over the years, you know, in the last 18 months, I've lost 20 some pounds. Really? Bring it all back on. Right. So oh, the, bring it all back on. Like we, we all get into yo -yo, that. Yo-yo, that yo-yo thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. This, this, listen, ladies and gentlemen, what they're about to share with us is very powerful. I know I could shed some, some, some pounds and do some things very differently because what you're saying is so prevalent, 
right? You, you just, the next thing you know, you just lazy. You just get comfortable and it starts with, I don't have to do anything. And then your next thing you know, and then it becomes something else and it becomes something else. So I am going to do a lot of listening today because I know this is a blessing that everybody needs to hear. All right. So please let's get started and we'll go from there. Okay. Um, you know, initially when you asked us to talk, I'm like, what do I got to talk about? Maybe the panel will be off talking. But anyway, so you <laughs> said no. The sin, iniquity, transgressions you've been talking about, this is where we are, kind of ride with it. Mm -hmm. And for this fast, you said our aim, our objective is to break the power of some sin. So you asked each of us, what is the sin that we're dealing with right now? Mm -hmm. So we get to talking and, you know, I look at the list of the seven deadly sins. Pride, yes. greed, wrath. Envy, lust, gluttony, and sloth. Can you repeat that again yes. just so that people can understand okay. we, the seven we, deadly sins? We took yeah. a look, look at the list of the seven deadly sins being mm -hmm. pride, greed, wrath, envy, lust, gluttony, and sloth. Mm. And right now the sin that we're dealing with is gluttony. So what is gluttony? For me, the first time I ever heard the word was when I was a young kid, um, maybe 10 years old. <laughs> so like I'm going for the third helping and my mom's like, hey, gluttony <laughs> is a sin. Well, you know, I don't know what gluttony is. <laughs> and yet, that, that my mom said that to me, say, so I noticed that at the time she was coming from a strong Catholic background. So we never talked anymore about that. So um, a few, I don't know, about a month or so ago, our daughter, Annie, you know her, she recommended um, that we watch a message online. Okay. There's a young pastor named Michael Todd. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. had a sermon called Cuff to the Cake, and he calls gluttony Satan's favorite sin. Satan's favorite sin. Yeah. Okay, so 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 when I think of gluttony, mm -hmm. okay, is it eating too much or the love? What it what can you give us a more maybe practical way to look at gluttony? Yeah, we're gonna expound on that a little bit. We're gonna expand <laughs> that. Okay, okay, perfect. So I'm jumping to okay, yeah. go ahead. First, the simple definition we got was excess in eating or drinking, food fixation, mm. a life given to excess, mm -hmm. overeating, eating too much. Mm. And of course, you know, what, what scriptures say about this? So we go to the Proverbs, right? We went to Proverbs 23, 21. Okay, let me get there. Let me get sure. there. Proverbs 23, verse 21. Yep. Okay. So do you want me to re read it then? Sure. I should yes, go ahead and read yes, it. Please. Okay. So please get your Bibles. Let's underline this. You know what? What you're sharing is amazing, Phil, because everybody I know on the 31st <clears> of December says they're going on a diet. Any New Year resolution is losing weight, getting more in shape mm -hmm. so you can develop your six pack until about, you know, January the 2nd. And then all of a sudden, uh oh, <laughs> by January the 15th, it's, it's out <clears> the window. So <throat> this is very, very powerful here. Okay. So Proverbs 23, verse 21 For the drunkard and the gluten shall come to poverty and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. Wow. Mm -hmm. So we know from scripture, this isn't a good thing. <laughs> no. And um, I don't know. I just have a lot of years of experience. I've been studying the whole diet and exercise and health thing for, I don't know, almost 40 years now. There was a time in my young 20s where I weighed 265 pounds. So I wanted to have a life change. But anyway, no, no, I'm no, 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 out, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. More to it. Did you say 265 pounds? Yeah. Did you know him <clears> then? <throat> no. Really? Well, I've shared with you previously, I'm a recovering drug addict. So that was back. That was then, but yeah. I didn't know about the 265 pound thing. But that was then. That was a former life. Okay. <laughs> amen. That was my oh, former Phil. life. So, um, you know, we're at the point where, um, you know, you, you remember four years ago, you came to my retirement party. Yes. So I'm like up 15 pounds from that. And, you know, we're concerned. I want to, I want to be healthy, but also in a scriptural sense, you know, they talk a lot about fasting and gluttony being a sin. So what does that mean? What, how does that apply to us right now? Mm. So we're being directed here. There's a little bit more to it than just dropping the weight. Yes, sir. Um, I won't yes, be too far ahead of us. So, yes, sir. Part of what we're learning is um, the idea, well, what, where, where's my note here? Seeking fullness, you know, we're seeking fullness in our food instead of in God sometime. First off, as I speak, you know, we're, we're just, we're trying to learn about this right now. It's not like we're experts and have it all figured out. So sure. this is what we're finding is applying to us. And I know that some people like me, part of it's the addict personality, but when it comes to food, that's kind of a weak spot sometimes. So overeating and, you know, being a little bit gluttonous comes easy. And I would like to not do that because I don't think that's godly. And I think that's holding me back from being able to bring my best in serving the Lord. 
Mm. So that's mm. what's kind of mm. leading us mm. into this study mm. here a little mm. bit. Mm. Mm. So one of the books I brought that I stuck on the floor, well, the online version I have is called Food is Not the Enemy, Overcoming Food Struggles and Finding True Fullness in Christ, has led us to look a little deeper into this. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't well, know. Just, what, I, if I may, what, what also comes to mind, too, is, is a couple of things. Um, you know, we can be gluttonous about things that aren't even food. Like when I, as, as Phil's talking even here, I'm thinking, what are the things I gorge myself on? Like Netflix. And so I think about hoarding. <laughs> I think about, hoarding. you know, you go to my basement, you look at my craft su supplies and it's like, yeah, you know, like a couple of sheets of craft papers, really enough to do anything I'd want to do. But why do I have to have reams and reams of it? So, you know, I, um, what are the things that we gorge ourselves on? What are the things that we over? Overindulge in that we turn to for to, to satisfy something. human needs that God gave to all of us, but you know his his intent was that we would turn to Him to meet those needs instead of the stuff that we stuff ourselves with. So 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 in you guys is your thinking and and your in your study about this glutton thing. It is when you over depend too much excessively on something. And, and you gain comfort in that thing as you're talking about hoarding and mm -hmm. all these things, mm -hmm. right? And you're not turning to God. Exactly. You're not turning <clears throat> to God. Like they're calling it idolatry. Mm -hmm. and, and, mm. and also, and also, you know, Phil, Phil mentioned his addiction. And, and here's where the enemy can be really tricky, right? Mm -hmm. So my own addiction in the past that I have over uh, that I overcame was was cigarette smoking. Hmm. I, I I smoked for 28 years. I've got to live like another 12 years before I'm at the break even point where I lived long enough that I didn't smoke for as long as I did smoke. Okay. And you know we can talk about nicotine and all the things the that does for you, of right? It There's and all that. This stuff. Um, but and and I, and I really had a supernatural encounter that allowed me to lay down the cigarettes. I would, it's a long story, but to shorten it, it's just like I was confronted by a person that in the moment I felt like David being confronted by Nathan mm. and called out on that sin. And what mm. the person said to me was, if you lay them down, he will lift you up. Oh, wow. And I had tried for years, all kinds of the white knuckling <clears throat> willpower that this will, this will play into what else we're, we're saying is like, you know, I didn't fall upon the spirit for the power to overcome that, you know, yeah. tried the gum, tried this, tried that. And the encounter was so intense that I literally threw the cigarettes in the garbage. I told someone else that I was with when it occurred, what had occurred. Yeah. And days later i was approached by someone that fasted on my behalf oh wow that they had heard what had happened and it's like i had i had um had that experience and i pray for people and i fast for people who i know are trying to break that sin on themselves and so like three days later you know you're withdrawing and it's like you want the cravings come like <laughs> yeah, even yeah. in our fast of we're course, three of days course. in right oh, yeah, now yeah yeah yeah, like, yeah. Oh, you're I'm hungry oh my I've god i'm hungry been. yeah right but also in that moment to know that someone was fasting on my behalf it's like i can't do this yeah but the tricky thing was it over time what became the hardest craving was after dinner at the end of the day, after dinner, that was when the craving for a cigarette was would the most, really get stronger. Was stronger, and what uh, what the enemy tricked me into was that well, if I just eat a second plate instead you, you of getting up from the dinner table to go have that cigarette, I'll just eat a second plate of food, or I'll have you know, a second helping. Well, then the craving's <clears> gone, and I just traded one addiction for the other, is what I see And then see it becomes excessive, and then you lose control, mm -hmm. and then you're going, going, and then you get to a place where, how did I get here? Yep. Yes. How it's did a, I get here? Very similar to drug addiction. And, um, you know, I share with you, I got clean and sober 33 years ago. And I went to 12 step groups like Narcotics Anonymous, Alcoholics sure. Anonymous. But anyway, so within the groups, they have an expression it's like, so what was your drug of choice? So I'm looking at this, it's like, so what is your sin of choice? Not that we choose them, but mm -hmm. you look at this list of sins. Some people, you know, food is not a problem. They don't have a problem with gluttony or overeating or using it to try to fulfill a need that only God can. So it's not everybody, you know. 
So this this happens to be our sin of choice right now. You know, it's really and, interesting. And I'm because vulnerable to it. When you say sin of choice, right? You know, I, I, I hope I hope with with this series that we've done, I I, I sin and its boogeyness, right? That we had with sin kind of thing has maybe been because once again, sin is just simply missing the mark, mm -hmm. right? So if you know you're overeating, if you know you're over whatever, and the over means you've now missed the mark, that is what we're terming as the sin, mm -hmm. right? So it's okay to have one yarn, but when all of a sudden you have a gazillion yarns and you don't need more yarns, but you're just adding more yarns and yarns and yarns, at some point you have to look at it and say, I have a whole <clears throat> basement full of yarns I don't even use anymore. Mm -hmm. Maybe I am missing the mark. Yeah, and in the in the area of food, which one of the things we've read is, is the title is "Food is Not the Enemy." Like God made food for our enjoyment; He made yes, it for sir. our body. Yes, so sir. it's and, and, you know everything He made, He said was good. Yes, you know it's just our misuse of it. And you've spoken about how you know transgression is deliberate, but sin missing the mark it's not necessarily it's not deliberate. deliberate. So a lot of this, you know, it doesn't start out as a deliberate thing. No. And we've got a lot of things working against us. <laughs> well, I don't know. I just think about experiences that growing up, food is often used as a reward for kids. You know, you, you clean that up or you behave. You get, you get candy, candy or you get some ice cream kind of thing, right? You're right. And, and you know, okay, we just got some something good just happened. Let's celebrate. Well, let's have food. It doesn't matter whether you're hungry or not. Let's just have food. This is the way we do it. Yeah. Or if yeah. something bad just happened yeah. and, you know, you're trying to kind of ease it. So, oh, let's go eat something. So these are things that kind of mislead us because, you know, naturally we're just eating for our body's nutrition. We're not supposed to be eating it to try to meet any needs beyond that. And this book's telling us, you know, that we should depend on the Lord to meet those needs. And I don't know. Right now I'm feeling very trusting with Pam and I were talking as we started. Do we really trust that that's going to, you know, that he's going to meet that need enough that this will not be a problem for us. Mm, mm. And another thing we have working against us, let me jump ahead a little bit, is, came from another book I read. It's called It Starts With Food. It Starts With Food. Yes. But anyway, this book's really good. It talks a little bit more about the, the science and the physiology of eating food in the human body and how all that works, mm. right? So by design, when God put us here and we're hunters, gatherers, he gave us a, the, you know, the ability to have a, sensitivity for the taste of sweet salty and fatty so in nature that told us what food was nutritious and what wasn't sweet salty and, and fatty, fatty. those yep. are the three main tastes yep okay so you know in nature that would tell us what was good and what wasn't something bitter or nasty you know we knew that wasn't such good for us oh so like if you're the hunter guy and you go cut the mm -hmm. tree and it tastes bitter probably yeah, not Yeah, you might want to not have that sweet one. salty fatty yeah so we're, huh. we're designed to have this taste. Well, now, you know, since the Industrial Revolution, the Agriculture <laughs> Revolution, here, let me read something. This comes from the book. Food scientists caught on to the fact that our brains respond strongly to specific flavors, such as the aforementioned sweet, fatty, and salty. Sure. So armed with this knowledge, they began to modify our whole foods. They sucked out the water, the fiber, and the nutrients and replaced them with ingredients like corn syrup, MSG, seed oils, and artificial sweeteners, colors, and flavors. Because they're trying to... All of this with the specific intention of inducing cravings, overconsumption, and bigger profits for the food, food manufacturer. Wow. So our food choices, you know, there's people kind of, I don't know, they're predators. They're preying on us. They're luring us into eating food that isn't necessarily the healthiest. But as I say that, I've got to say... Just because these foods are a problem for me doesn't mean they're a problem for someone else. I mean, someone else might be able to have, have a diet Pepsi and combos and they don't feel like they need to eat it every day. Now, me, I start eating food like that. Next thing you know, I'm eating it every day. And I'm thinking in the morning, like, oh, I can't wait till later today when I have an opportunity to eat my... <laughs> you've heard the expression comfort food. Yes. What does that mean? We're not supposed to be eating food for comfort, are we? Well, and I Are think we? what, well, I think too, what you just read speaks to, um, that, that clearly speaks to, this is the result of a world system. It's not kingdom principles that did this. Like mm. we're, we're modifying food in a way that's really, really not a kingdom principle. Because if it was a kingdom principle, we'd want wholesome mm. and in right quantities. I mean, cause, cause it, you know, you, you guys are onto something because. Okay, it's modified to be palatable to the taste. 
whether it's sweet, salty, or fatty. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it gets to the point where it becomes addictive. You well, can't that, stop eating it. They're and deliberately. Then you miss the mark. You just. <laughs> But they deliberately design these foods to appeal to the sweet, salty, and you know, fatty taste. But they deliver that more so than what it should be naturally, and they don't give you any of the nutritional, the nutrition your body's really craving. Mm. They're trying to get you to buy more and eat more so you spend more money. But that's not really all of what I want to talk about. I just wanted to share that for those of us who have this dysbiosis and the gluttony, here's things working against us that if we're not aware of it, you know. It could be leading us into a sin and we're missing the mark, but it's not like we're deliberately or intentionally doing this. We just need to be, you just miss. We the need mark. to be educated. About yeah. This. Yeah. 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 Wow. This is, this is incredible. This is incredible. So, you know what? I wanted you to go a bit about, talk a bit about how we're supposed to be hungry for God. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. But when you feel that vacuum, right. How does it get to the point where it's like, you know what? I feel the vacuum. Let me go eat. I feel the vacuum. Let me go binge. And I feel the vacuum. Let me go smoke drug. Like, how does that, how does that, how do you, what happens there? Can you tell us a bit about that? Like in your past, maybe experiences that you've had, that kind of thing. Well, well, I think what's important is we have to give, we got to give voice to the vacuum. So what is the thing I'm feeling? So as you say that, because God made us with feelings, it's data. God made us with needs. So we have to understand what it is that I'm feeling. I'll apply it to myself when I'm feeling restless, right? That's, that's the one for me. Okay. So, and I actually did a little little research on myself that restlessness is being an inability to rest or relax because of anxiety or boredom. Okay. So that tells me when I, cause sometimes I feel restless. I don't, I, I I just feel restless. I don't even, so we get to stop and think about what we think about again. Right. Cause we've had that conversation before. So before I go for the Triscuits, before I go for the whatever, (laughs) it's got to like, what am I doing? Why am I feeling restless? Is it because I'm anxious? And if I am anxious, what am I anxious about? And taking that to prayer. So that's where we have to identify our feelings because because in the realm of emotions, when we have an unpleasant feeling, that's telling us we have a need that's not being met. Okay, so that's what feelings are so intended to be. Right. If I'm feeling anxious, that means I'm fearful about something. I have a need for security or I have a need for comfort, or I have a need for, and I have to identify what it is that I need and then go to the proper place to have that need met. And sometimes we choose food. Sometimes we choose mm-hmm. food instead of prayer. Or we choose food instead of, I need some, I need some companionship. I need somebody to mm-hmm. talk to or those kind of things. Same way with boredom. If I'm feeling bored, that tells me I have a need for entertainment or I have a need for recreation mm. or I just have a need to sleep. Sometimes and sometimes our world is designed this way. I'm turning to something that has caffeine because what I really need is to take a nap. Sure. Right. So instead I'll pump the sugar. Like there's that two o'clock crash that people talk about that yeah, work yeah, in yeah, corporate yeah, yeah, America. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I've had my lunch or if I had high carbs, I'm tired now. So then I'm going to go get the hand candy bar to have the sugar hit. When, if I would have eaten in moderation and the way God intended all along, I wouldn't be, be having fine. those fluctuations. Mm, mm, so again, mm, world, world, <clears throat> world systems versus kingdom principles. Wow. So this week we're learning about developing that hunger for God. We're reading scripture. I mean, I've, I've been studying scripture for a while, but I've never really put a whole lot of thought to the, all that biblical imagery about hungering and thirsting is used as our desire for God. Mm. I've never put that in the context of maybe that maybe a lack of me hungering and thirsting for God and getting filled could be part of what I'm trying to fill with food. <laughs> you know what? I've it's, never thought about that. It's, it's interesting you say this, right? But given what it is that you've shared, right? You, you, you think about David. As the deer panthers for the water, so my soul longs after you, right? I hunger for thee and all these Davidic psalm, psalm things, right? The, the emotion was there, but he turned to God. I mean, David had lunch and dinner. He ate. Mm-hmm. But where maybe we are missing it is, every time that yearning comes, could you imagine David just eating every time these cravings came? He he won't be able to do what God wanted him to do, mm-hmm. right? Well, so absolutely. you are right. Well, you, that applies to Jesus as well. He hungered and thirst. 
thirsted. So yeah, once again, God gives us food as a gift and it's, it serves its purpose. The problem is when it's too much. And you know, some of us have more of a disposition for that than others. You know what? You, you said something, Pam, that, that is very profound to me, which is our emotions are indicators, mm-hmm. right? And now that you're saying it, right? So as the, for example, as the deer panthers for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. So when there's that, I, I, I want something. David was turning it to God. We, on the other hand, miss the mark. And we just think, hmm, I want something to do. I'm bored. Mm -hmm. Eh, Where's this coming from? Eh, Potato chips, extra ranch or something, dips. Mm -hmm. And then next thing you know, you just miss the mark totally. There's nothing wrong with it. But when it's excessive, Mm -hmm. as you're saying, it loses control. Then you look at yourself and you say to yourself, how did I get here? And you don't even feel good about yourself. Because you just missed it. It's not healthy. And some of what's been helpful in what we're reading is um, it's, you know, the reading's telling us things like, okay, if, if this is what I'm dealing with, how do I stand firm? Okay, running to God instead of food, choosing uh-huh. healthy meal options, and mm-hmm. filling our minds with the truth. Were you not just talking to us about the truth today? <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> what is really true here? I don't know. Just I've heard that before, but I've never thought about, you know, really hungering and thirsting for the word. Mm-hmm. But as we're talking right now, as we've been studying this week, gee whiz, I don't think I've ever been this thirsty or this hungry for the word before in my life. You know, it's interesting because we were talking about Hebrews chapter 6, 4 to 6. You, you've really got me thinking where he says they have tasted of the good word of God. It's a taste. Mm-hmm. It's not every time that I feel hungry that I should be just going to the food thing because man shall not live by bread alone but also by the word of God. It's a good use of analogy. I mean, normally, you know, I think of the word, I think of hearing, not tasting it. But I got to think of it in a different way here. Mm. Really tasting it more than just hearing it, taking it in, absorbing it. You know, it's in my, it's in me, well, and in I, my cells. I think the scripture that says it's an invitation. Come taste and see that the Lord, Lord is, is good. good. So, so uh, you know, so when I'm turning to something else, I'm, it, it's the original question, is God really good? Like, you know, Taste. the original question in the garden, they were tempted with food, you know, <laughs> right? Yeah, they were tempted with food. Like, yeah. did, did God really say that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so is he holding back on us? Is he really good? Will he really meet my needs? Will, will I know what I need to know? Yeah. Will I be guided the way I need to guide to be guided? And, you know, by turning to something else, I have to admit, I'm saying God's not good or I don't really believe or do I trust the way I really would like to. You know, it's really interesting because uh, let, let's make this clear. What, what, what you guys are saying is that. Food, food is not a food is not a bad thing. No, not at all. It's not it's what we all. need for sustenance. God created food. It's just that when those indicators, as you're saying, are stirred, and the only thing that we do is just turn to food, and we forget that we should hunger for God. We should also thirst for God. Mm-hmm. And he, Luke chapter four verse four says, "Man shall not live by bread alone." <clears throat> but by every word of God, sometimes when we sense those emotions, we should do it the right way. Run into God instead of food, mm-hmm. right? Choosing healthy options if we do eat something, knowing when to stop, right? Mm-hmm. And then filling our minds with the truth. We are hungry for <clears throat> something, right? Absolutely. And you know what? It's funny because <clears throat> some I was sharing with you guys, and uh, I believe it was Psalm, where he said that we're fasting to humble the soul and the soul is where all these emotional biological things of food mm-hmm. happens mm-hmm. just so that we can hear god better i never saw it that way i never did i just never did i mean if daniel was depressed every time that the people were trying to persecute him he would be 500 pounds or something crazy like that but there were times when he said you know what let me fast instead mm-hmm. and seek the face of god <clears throat> mm-hmm. that's what he did he didn't always turn to food but they had emotions. Mm-hmm. And, and a few other things just from growing up, I think it influenced me to be where I am is, um, okay, as a young kid, if you take too much food, you know, and you decide I'm full, I don't want to eat anymore. My parents are like, oh no, 
That's a sin to waste. You're going to sit there till you eat all of it. So you're not hungry. So guess what? You're eating. (laughs) That is fascinating. Or what about even now? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there's a lot of good social stuff that happens around people eating together, you know, talking, getting to know each other. But when you go and you're somebody's guest and, you know, you're not hungry, but yet if you don't eat, that's kind of seen as rude, Rude. disrespectful, discourteous. But, you know here's a situation where, okay, I'm not really hungry, but I'm eating because I don't want to be rude. So, I mean, we find ourselves in situations too, where we're eating when we're simply really not hungry. Our body's not really craving, Mm -hmm. Hey, you know, you're hungry. Mm -hmm. You need nutrition Mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) No, I hear you. There is a lot of pressure around this, but man, I mean, when you guys give the definition of what gluttony is Mm -hmm. and you broaden it to the point where it's like doing excessively something Mm -hmm. that you don't need, it makes a whole lot of difference. I know you you mentioned um, Netflix a lot. That's what I'm telling Pam. I'm like looking at TV, like you know. Sometimes we're, I'm a glutton of Netflix. <laughs> Amen. I mean, it's simply too much. I mean, in and of itself, it's not bad. But when I sit and spend eight hours of a, of a, of a day doing that, I'd say that's a little too much. Forget eight hours a day. Let's just say you spend these bingey <laughs> things, right? You just you just watch the series and all <clears> that time. It's not bad. But then when it comes to, okay, I think, I think maybe I should pray. Mm-hmm. There were some things I should have For done. For 20 today minutes, you just can't even do it. So you're craving mm-hmm. gluttonously these things and then you just, you just, you just miss. And um, something else I've learned from sobriety and I guess a little bit from scripture is, um, you know, when I first got clean and sober, you know, recovering alcoholic as well. It's like I wanted to go out and tell everybody it drank. Oh, that's bad. You shouldn't do it. Somewhere I heard a statistic that, um, Roughly eight out of every 10 Americans do not have a problem with alcohol. It's only the, those of us who are that two out of 10. So people can go out and drink. Like I can go out with Pam. We can go out to dinner in a nice place. She can have a drink and she's not wanting two or three. She's not thinking about the next day. So it's not a problem for her. me. Back in the day, once I got started, I didn't know when to, where to <laughs> you're stop. Off, you're off and to the ditches. It, it became a real problem. It yeah. became a real problem in my life. So as I talk about food here, I got to, I can't like go out and tell everybody else what to do or this applies. If anyone listening can relate and this applies, that's wonderful. And if not, that's fine too. But I realize just because this is applies to me and this is my sin of choice. Sure. Format, sure. It, it's not necessarily mm-hmm. everybody else's, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, or mm-hmm. do we read in scripture where there's things about how, th- you know, all things are lawful for me, but are not necessarily helpful. But I mean, all things are lawful, but are not necessarily helpful. Yes. But, Okay, this might be a problem for me, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's a problem for someone else. So yes. I don't need to go and impose my thing on them. When, yeah. You know, okay, I, but there's this is something my to thing. be said. But there's something to be said for if you know it's becoming excessive, you mm-hmm. know. If it's beginning to interfere with your closeness to God, you just know. And that is when I think, as you're mm-hmm. saying, the spiritual antennas are going off that you need to rake it, rake it in. Yeah, and you just made me think of something as, as you're saying that. It's like, or if you're waking up in the middle of the night and walk into the cover, maybe God woke you up in the middle of the night. To go pray. To, yeah, that because he wanted to tell you something. Even more importantly, maybe he was answering the prayer, and if you would have just like sat in silence before him instead of eating the cookie, right, you might have heard what it was he had to say to you. And that, that I'm just being convicted in this moment with what you just no, said. It, it, it is true. If somebody wakes up at middle of the night and they can't sleep, it's very easy. Let me grab a chip. Let me grab cookie, milk. And you just, you just <laughs> yeah. And sometimes, you know, like we gorge ourselves. And it's, yeah. I don't know. It's similar to, I don't know, I was trying to explain to my daughter how yeah. being under the influence of a substance, it's like it kind of messes up your radio frequency. If you're trying to tune into God, I think mm-hmm. when you're under the influence of mm-hmm. something like that, it kind of messes up being able to really tune into God's frequency. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you have some scriptures, which I want, I want us to jump to, sure. right? And, and, and this is, this is incredible because boy, Phil, you have no idea how much you're helping me. Okay. So I think we're going to it goes both ways, doesn't it? <laughs> oh boy. You know, uh, listen, I, I feel convicted of certain things that I probably need to change based on what you're saying. All right. Hebrews 4, 6, the word of God is sharper than any two edged sword. It divides asunder. Mm-hmm. So it's intended to cut. Right. So right now you're really cutting some things in me like, okay, you need to watch this and that. Right. Because the next thing you know, you ask yourself because of iniquity, how did I get here? How did this happen? Mm-hmm. I didn't used to be like this, but all of a sudden 
you know you're there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you mentioned something about 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12. And I believe you're going to be blessed by this. So get your Bible. Let's read it together. Okay. He says, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the power of any is when I believe is the addiction thing you're talking about. Yeah. Right mm -hmm. now, now you've crossed a certain threshold where it is controlling you, mm -hmm. and that is when maybe you become perverted, and that is when the iniquity side begins to, and it, and it holds you back, and it holds you back. You just mm -hmm. because I am sure, and, and Phil, this is maybe getting into too much information here, but I am sure that in those years, when alcohol had power over you, you were stagnant. Mm -hmm. You just you all just, that. That whole period of time when I was using drugs, I was, I don't know, like spiritually dead almost, just barely a number. And they, they say in recovery that the when you the age you are when you start using drugs, it's like your emotional development stops right there. Whew. So when I got clean and sober at age 27, emotionally, spiritually, I, I was a 12-year-old still. Wow. So I guess that means that um, now at 60, I'm still back in my 40s emotionally. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but anyway. You know, it, it, it's funny, but it's not funny. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have gotten into things, Pam, which was lawful until all of a sudden that lawful thing had power mm -hmm. over them and, and they were addicted. They didn't know what to do. And it, it stunts it, our growth. And, and it, it stunts your growth. And it wasn't a deliberate choice. No one ever decides, hey, I, I want to be an addict, a drug addict someday, or hey, I want to be a glutton someday. It, it's, yeah. Pam, can you talk more to that? Well, as it, it, you say that, it's it's little by little. Yeah, we don't, um, you know, in the in the area of overeating. I remember this myself. There was a time before I learned about the second the second plate. I couldn't eat that much food. Like I would just eat as long as I was hungry. So I'd eat a little bit till I was full. It didn't take that much. And over time, it's like your stomach expands. expands. And it's like, oh, and, and you, I mean, that stuffed <clears throat> feeling is your stomach telling you, please stop. Yeah. Alfred, when I met her, I mean, she was smoking cigarettes at the time, but we go out to eat. She wouldn't even eat a full meal. So I'd eat my meal, then I'd eat what, <laughs> what she had left. You know, remember, it's a sin to waste food. <laughs> it's a sin to waste food. You know, okay, let me expand this a little bit, right? Um, once again, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. Being expedient are not all uh, smart, you know, mm -hmm. expedient. Not beneficial. Not yeah. beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. I think what you're saying is it can even be, I joke about this stuff, but I realize it. Maybe it can even be cell phone, right? It's nothing wrong with a cell phone. I mean, we need it. You mm -hmm. just need it to succeed. But when all of a sudden it's like, whoa, 24 hours later, I didn't do anything else to a world. It has some kind of power over me. Mm -hmm. you, you, you're not maybe praying anymore. You, you're truly deviated from God. There were those times when maybe you would just say, I'm going to read my Bible. And you did. Mm -hmm. You had it scheduled and disciplined. Now this thing has power. It, it, it can be a lot of things. Mm -hmm. It really, really can. Right? It's, it's, it's just fascinating. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read another aspect of it, which is I believe you have 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And we're looking at verse 23 here. It's similar. Okay. And it says, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. So, okay, maybe it doesn't have power over you, but it's not helpful. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just not helpful. It will put you in a spot where basically it begins to rather destroy mm -hmm. you, make you deteriorate in a way that you just, you just, you just don't need to. It's just a struggle, mm -hmm. right? So this is this is this is very 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 powerful. Now, Pam, what are your thoughts on? And I know you're a counselor, right? So, if somebody came to you and they had some of these challenges and issues, how would you help them address it to better re begin to reverse the trend or whatsoever? How would you guys go about it? Phil, you can chime in as well. Uh, well, at first it would depend on the issue. So if it, mm -hmm. if it's, if it's a, it's a, if it's a full out, um, you know, drug addiction, alcohol addiction that requires detoxification because it's a little different than, than, you know, I over my case, mm -hmm. I overeat, mm -hmm. I can modify my diet without a danger to my health. 
Mm-hmm. So there are some instances where we need some medical intervention. We need to we need to have you in rehab so that you can be monitored for that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's also the heart of it again is it's back to let's think about what you think about. And and scripture says take every thought captive. Yes. To the to the obedience of Christ and then understanding what the lie is, identifying the lie, and in Christian sense, replacing that with the truth about who you are and what the scripture says. The Lord will supply all your needs according Mm, to your riches and glory. mm, mm. You know, I will be cared for. So it's it's kind of a long-term thing and a very complicated process, Mm, mm, you know. mm. And um, another thing I'd like to point out, too, is where I'm at right now, and and this this plays into the idea of ministry, you know, as as a... someone in my, you know, later years and wanting to leave a leg- legacy and realizing that if I stand on the timeline of my life and look back, mm. there's a longer, longer timeline this look way back. than that, <laughs> that way. way. And another thing is, is like, I don't want to die before my time. Mm. Now, true, the Lord ordains all of our days, but what if, you know, I have an expiration date according to him that though, because I've desecrated the temple, and I've, you know, I've like, it might, ex- it might run its course beforehand. Mm. And there's so much work to be done in the kingdom. Yes. And we need to have the, the strength, the bodily strength, the emotional strength, the mental strength to, to, to a- achieve what work he has to be wrought out in us. Yeah. And so I think it's also important to, to, to practice temperance, which is the virtue that counteracts gluttony, mm. you know, and develop the fruits of the spirit and, and the scriptures and the practices that help mm-hmm. us do that. Mm-hmm. 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 I don't want to die before my time. There's work to be done. There's work to be done. I like, uh, you just, you just hit on something, which maybe we can elaborate a little bit on Phil mm-hmm. and, and Pam, of course, walk in the spirit, walk in the spirit and you should not fulfill these desires. Can you talk a bit about that? You said gluttony, the, the antidote to gluttony, you said was temperance. Can you kind of get into that a little bit? Is that okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because, well, if we look at, and I'll, I'll have you turn to it, Second Peter 1. Second Peter, oops. 5 through 8. Second Peter. 5 through 8. Because as we went through this study, it's like, yeah, I'm aware of the sin. What's the antidote slash vaccine? What supplements can I take to help develop the fruits of the Spirit mm-hmm. that, you said Second Peter Second 1. Second Peter 1, 5 through 8. Oh, sorry. Second Peter 1, 5 through 8. Mm-hmm. Okay. Should I read? Yeah, okay. please do. By, and beside this, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. Verse 8. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall never be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. So so at it, it, and in the um, ESV version, it, it says, you know, supplement your faith with mm-hmm. this. So we have faith. Right. And so if we add virtue to mm-hmm. faith, which mm-hmm. temperance is a virtue. Okay. Virtue being moral excellence. Moral or excellence. behavior that demonstrates or shows moral excellence. Sure. Right. So we, we so we behave in a way mm-hmm. and we and we learn and then we develop temperance is self control. Right. And, and be faithful in it, 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 be faithful, steadfastness, fastness, be faithful in that practice and, and be how God was, mm. be how Christ was godliness, godlike, mm. you know, mm. and then mm. add to that brotherly affection, love, you know, love your neighbor as yourself can mm. love, love myself enough not to abuse myself I love, love myself enough to eat healthily. Mm. And, and that is loving. And I like what the ESV says. It says, for these qualities are yours mm. and are increasing. Mm. So, you know, w- when we became believers, we were safe, but we were also sealed with the Holy Spirit. Sure. So we need to appropriate. These things are ours. 
they're, they're there. Christ is in me. I am in Christ. Mm -hmm. So then it becomes a, a matter of exercising them and, and developing, and they will keep you again from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm, 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 mm. These are powerful virtues that we have to use to supplement our faith. Mm -hmm. the discipline and, and it was interesting in service today um one of the one of the lines in in the in the songs that they sang was that um he silenced the boast of sin and death the boast of he sin silenced and death. the boast of sin and death so mm. sin and death can't say aha they can't they can't brag about anything because mm, 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 he mm, said mm, silence mm, it and as they sung that song I am saying out loud, and, and, and this is something we can speak into our own lives as a prayer, shut up gluttony, speak temperance, mm. or shut up, and I found myself doing that, shut up, fill in the blank, speak, open up, mm. so shut up this, open up this, mm. and as we again, it's like, and then they sang about breaking the chains, so it's like, shut up, Shut up this thing that is besetting me. Just sure. shut up. Sure. Draw near to God. Sure. You know, f resist the devil. Draw near, draw near to God. Mm -hmm. And he's got to flee. So shut up, devil. Shut up over mm -hmm, here mm -hmm, and draw mm -hmm. near to God is yeah. the antidote yeah. to developing yeah. these yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. That's, 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 that's incredible. That's incredible. So, Phil, you, you mentioned something about drugs. You mentioned something about drinking. Mm -hmm. And here you are, right? You here, here you are, mm -hmm. uh, sober. You know, doing well, beautiful family, all that kind of stuff, right? So, I want you to think back to those days. Okay, I know you're a saved, you're a believer right now, but can you walk us through when you just said enough of this deviation? Like it, it's a process, right? Absolutely. But can you walk us through? The spiritual help, tenacity, some of the things that you did to make sure you you now don't not not that, that you hit the mark, not miss the mark, that kind of thing. I'll try. I, I'll try to be brief. Just, just, this, just, this just you usually know, just, a longer conversation. Yeah. I don't know. I just reached a point where I'm using drugs, being 265 pounds and all that. I just reached a point where I wasn't suicidal, but I did. I prayed. Okay, Lord, just. Just take me out of this life and make room for someone who's got something to contribute. You prayed those prayers. And, that, and I prayed that prayer. And then the next day, I haven't smoked a cigarette since that day, but the getting off drugs took a little while longer. But anyway, that's where it began. That is where it began. Then 12-step recovery. As I've shared to you before, I grew up Catholic and I misunderstood a lot of things. I thought I had to earn my salvation. But anyway, so 12-step recovery is like, okay, just pray to your higher power however you understand them. So like get up and pray every morning. Because you want to get clean and sober. So that's where it started. Mm -hmm. So then after three years of being clean and sober, it was like, okay, Lord, I'm, I'm grateful to be clean and sober, but there's got to be a little more to life than that. Mm -hmm. I mean, normal people are living lives. That's when I came to accept Jesus Christ and realize and recognize that he was my higher power. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the principles under 12-step recovery, I mean, Jesus spoke about that stuff in the Sermon on the Mount, but that's a whole other discussion. But anyway, okay. it's the same spiritual principle. So that's what brought me around to it. So as I was mentioned on Easter, any times I have any doubt, is Jesus for real? Is this for real? I just think about what happened in my life and the whole drug recovery thing and what mm. happened there. Well, I mean, it was a point where it was like, I don't want to live this life anymore. If oh this is all I got God. left to look forward to, I'm, I'm ready to go. <laughs> I'm ready to be gone. So anyway, now though, at this age I'm at now, I feel like time is running out. So I feel there's more of an urgency. So for the last four years, my prayer almost every day is, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do with the rest of my life? This is a point in my life where it should be more about giving and less about taking. I've done mm. a lot of taking in my life. Mm. Mm. So mm. I don't know. I'm kind of just, I'm learning. I'm discovering this is new to me in many ways right now. And it's, I don't know, it's just great to be here in this moment, in this time with you, you know, sharing and, this. And, and, and Phil, let's just say that when you go back to God the way that you did, right? Mm -hmm. And he begins to alter your appetites, your feelings, your emotions. And you begin to see a bit clearly. Hopefully, I pray that that revelation is making you more assured of who you are. Mm -hmm. Right? You, you, you're becoming more assured of who you are. And you're mm -hmm. ready for God to just absolutely take over. Do you realize how helpful it's been for you to tell us that? <clears throat> 
to no. tell us that um, if we don't know who we are and the, what we carry in us, the world will tell us. And we'll, yeah. you know, we talk about all those times where we're scared of being a failure, where we don't have confidence in ourselves, yeah. but we didn't realize, you know, we're carrying Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit. Is we, we've got something that's much, much bigger than what much, we could much, have ever much, much, asked much for or imagined or hoped to have at any given moment. You know, Pam, please jump <clears throat> jump in here at any time. One of the things that I think was is some kind of setback when, when, when we talk about the body of Christ is this. It's almost like we're afraid to say or comment and say we carry the grace, the strength, the anointings, or whatever it is of God. And allow ourselves to feel good about it it's almost like you get to that point where you're like okay i better i better not be prideful yeah, ego, you don't want to be ego kind of thing right you get to that position eh, god gave me all those things but if you accept it you're egoistic or something no it's a promise it's a promise he said i promise the holy ghost of promise will come right so he's sitting in heaven saying I've given you these things. And we in, on earth are saying, we know we have it, but we don't want to indulge in it too much because we might be too proudful. And God is saying, no, I gave you power to become sons of God. Right? So manifest. And then he said in Romans, creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. But we try to tame down the manifestation because we feel like maybe we're being prideful. So he created us in his image. Pam, I look like God. Phil, you look like God. You look like God. Whether we like it or not, we are his image. The empowerment is what we struggle with. So the devil takes advantage of it. Oh, no, you're, you're, you're hey, 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 hey. And that is what he uses to keep us down. Mm -hmm. But if we can accept the fact that God doesn't see it as a sin to be happy, accepting upon his grace upon our life, I think it would change a lot of things. Absolutely. And I think there's a difference between appropriating what God's given us mm -hmm. and, 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 living, moving, breathing, and the authority that he's granted us as his children, mm -hmm. the difference between that and thinking that I am him. And the mistake the enemy made was the enemy wanted to sit in his seat. She said, I want I to be like sit a... in his seat. No. But I'll take all the things you've given me. Lord, yes. And walk and in that power them. and use and it. And a lot of the gifts I didn't even know I had. Yes. You know, and it, it's, it's really a wonderful thing. You know what, F F Pam, you've nailed it. Because... What you're saying is very important. It's almost like when we accept what God says we can have, we think we're being like him. We're not God, but he wants us the appropriation of that power to be as effective as he is. But you're not God. And you're right. That's what the devil thought he was. Yeah, and you're not God. Yeah, there's a difference between receiving what he's given us and thinking and ego, which is EGO. I've heard it described as edging God out. <laughs> So there's Amen. a difference Amen. between receiving the gift that he has to give me, right? And then doing this thing, like, yeah, get out of here. I got it. There's a difference. There's yeah, a yeah, difference. yeah, 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 yeah. There's a difference. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so, so just to bring it in layman terms, okay, I think what Pam is trying to say is this. If I bought a car and I gave the car to my child, right, and he's sitting around saying, well, if I drive the car, I'm dad. No, dad bought you a car, drive the car, do your chores, and be more productive in society. That's it. You're not, you're not dad. You're just, you're just, you're my son. And that's where, because we don't know these things, the devil has a field day with us. But, you know, Pam and Phil, I, 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 during this series, the more I listen to it, I, I have come to believe this with all my heart. That of all the family members that are out there, and of all the people that you can imagine, if he pricked your heart and chose you, there's a reason. Because he trusts you. You are the one who's going to make a difference in that environment. You're his guy. You're his girl. You're it. 
So you might as well be the man that he chose so that he could bless the land, bless the family, bless everything. I believe it. I, I, I really do. Like, God chooses Phil to play the guitar. He didn't, he, he didn't call me to go do that. But it is in you <laughs> to, to, to bless everybody that is part of this church with that gift. But then when the devil comes in and says, oh, 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 you, you ain't all that, it suppresses it. And then you deny that grace upon everybody else. Man, this is, this is too much. I feel like we can go on and on and on about this. But anyway, let me let you guys share some of the few thoughts that you might have, something you wanted to touch on that maybe we haven't, we haven't discussed yet. Okay? Well, I just, I'd like to share. This is, this is something that, that's from a study that I, I'm not sure if we had even started, started the series mm -hmm. from something that I, that, I, that I read. And this was written on July 4th. It comes from one is a author named Andrew Murray. So I Andrew Murray. inserted that. Mm -hmm. And then the second part is a prayer that a, a long faithful mentor, thank God for this person, gave me a prayer card and it's what it says. So I would just like to read those. Things please, please, may. let's do it. All right. It says, let me not be content just to know that the spirit is in me. That will not profit but little. Mm -hmm. Let me cultivate the habit in each religious exercise of bowing reverently in silence before God to give the spirit the recognition that is his due mm. and keep down the will of the flesh that is so ready with its service of God. Mm. I just think that speaks to that wrestling that goes in with us, but it's also a prayer for what we would like. Sure. To, to mortify the flesh and sure. walk in the spirit. Sure. And then this is the prayer that my friend prays every morning. Amen. When she wakes up before she's ever out of the bed, Let's she hear opens it. her eyes and it says, Oh, Holy Spirit, beloved of my soul, I adore you. Enlighten me, guide me, strengthen me, console me. Tell me what I should do. Give me your orders. Mm. I promise to submit myself to all that you desire of me and to accept all that you permit to happen to me. Let me only know your will. Amen. 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 Now that is dedication. That is dedication. That is dedication. You know, it's interesting because there's another man of God that the great Rod Parsley used to talk about. And his name was uh, Lester Summerall. And he would say, when Lester Summer would wake up in the morning, he would say, okay, God, give me 20 minutes. <laughs> so he would go take a shower, brush his teeth, comb his hair. And then after he get done with that, I think the man of God would just, Lester Summer would just say, okay, you can have the rest of the day. Right? How, how beautiful is that? Mm -hmm. Right? Whereas everybody else has flipped, we take 24 hours, no, 23 hours, six, 40 minutes, and give God 20. Mm -hmm. He was the flip. And uh, some of the exploits that Lester Summer did was just incredible. But anyway, Phil, what do you have to say? I'm really not much. Just um, I'm I'm grateful. I'm humbled. I'm grateful. I'm glad yeah. you asked us to speak. I see. Yeah. Uh, we're just, you know this, this is new to us. We're learning, so I'm grateful. I appreciate you asking us mm -hmm. to speak and share. Mm -hmm. And I'm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, um, we jointly fit together. Assembly. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's one thing that I also learned recently from uh, Pastor Parsley, where he said, listen, when you go to Ikea and all these places, they gather, right? They gather. It's a gathering. But an assembly is when it's put together. So, so I, 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 you know, Pam, it's, I hope it blessed you here. It just, it just blew my mind. Like, you know what? This man is right. I can get the box, but there's a manual to what? fitly joined together so that it's functional mm -hmm. and i feel like sometimes we have everything that we need in christianity but we don't spend the time to read the manual to fitly join it together so mm -hmm. that we can function appropriately yeah something you were talking about today you know, I put in my time, I read my devotions in the morning, and then like I'm done. I don't think about it so much for the rest of the day. Now, if it's a manual about how to put my recording studio together or a piece of gear, I'm all over it. I'm all over it. it. You're so as you're it. talking, you know, my hunger should be for the word like that. 
Yes. I should be where I, I can't get enough of this. I need to, I want to learn more rather than, okay, I, I did my devotion. I'm done for now. That's it. So you're done, but God has not made you done. <clears throat> right? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. There's a functionality to being able to fit the word of God journey together, which would make us more effective. Well, Pastor, this is this has increased my appetite. Oh, oh. This is increasing oh, my appetite. Oh, oh. It's amazing. It's just incredible. Just incredible. Okay. Well, I'm sure you guys have, uh, is there anything else you want to share with the people of God? Okay. This was, this was very helpful. I, I, I get it now. You know, of course the gluttony is the food thing, but it goes beyond just the food. You miss the mark when you can gluten over anything else out there if you're not careful. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing you know, it's an iniquity because it becomes a perversion. It, it becomes, it's, it's, it just gets in the way of God. It's not, it's not necessary. So I pray that, you know, as you're watching and you're listening to us, remember, I always say this. It's very easy to point at somebody else and see somebody else's faults whilst you yourself, you've got issues. All right. There's a guy in the Bible called Achan. And the Bible said the Achan of iniquity caused all the Israelites to sin. It just doesn't stop with you. You've got something, right? And if you be honest with yourself and you deal with that thing and go humble before God, I believe that he will help you fix it. All right. It's not always somebody else. Sometimes it's you. And we need to be matured and accept that. Mm -hmm. And when I hear you two talking here, I mean, Phil, it's, it's like you really accept the responsibility for the addictions Absolutely. and things of the past. And God has brought you out of it. And may Christians be able to do that in, in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right. So I want you to, I, I did the beginning prayer, right? I want one of you or both of you to bless to bless us, okay? That, 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 that this gluten and all these things you're talking about will be able to break that cycle and just give more time to God. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Okay, so please, whoever you want to, who you want to do it. Okay, I guess we're volunteering Pam, right? Mm -hmm. All right, Pam, let's do it. Papa God, in the name of Jesus and by his blood, we come before you yes. and I lift up each and every soul that is affiliated, associated, membered, partnered with Soul Restoration Amen. Ministry. And we thank and praise you for that assembly. Mm. And I ask that you lift up each person in the Holy Spirit, that you break off every chain, mm. that, that whatever needs to be shut up and thrown into the pit of hell where it belongs in each individual is done today, mm. right now, in the name of Jesus. Amen. And that you open up rivers of life, rivers of water, um, that manna from heaven falls into the life and that you develop the fruit of the Spirit in each and every one of us. It's in your num son's name that I pray. Amen and amen. 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 Listen, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. These are one of those messages where if you pay attention, you get gold nuggets everywhere. This is the struggle. This is the struggle. This is the struggle. And I believe that with what you guys have shared, it would help us to basically tame our appetites. Okay? Bring our appetites unto the subjection of God so that it doesn't overpower us and stops us not being able to just, just be edified. All right? So thank you for that. Please join us again. Next Wednesday, it will be a blessing. It will be an honor to have you and make sure that you are still standing for the kingdom of God. We love you. Take care. God bless you. See you next time. <laughs>